Hey YouTube friends, guess what time it is on this snowy day. I am going to go start my veggies and herbs and some lettuce. So join me in my little greenhouse and let's do some gardening. Here it is, all set up and just waiting for us. Actually pretty warm in here. We got almost a foot of snow last night and this morning. Join me in the greenhouse and let's start some tomatoes and peppers, herbs, lettuce. I'm so excited. It's almost garden season. And to me, it's garden season. So I have my seed starting greenhouse. It is too cold for me to try to heat the greenhouse this time of year. First I have this my black gold seedling mix. I'm just going to pour my dirt. My seedling mix in my container. Always wet it down because once you put it in your little trays it sinks and then you end up with like half the dirt than what you thought you would once you water your seedlings. So you want it kind of clumpy. Into the bottom tray and we're just gonna fill this up. Feels good to get my hands in the dirt again. Which is pretty funny. When I was younger, I was one of those kids that didn't like to get dirty. Didn't like my hands dirty. People that know me would tell you that I was the last person they would think that would enjoy gardening. So you just want to press into the dirt. You don't want to pack it, but there we go. This tray is ready for some seeds. I'm actually going to do my seeds inside grab this you my YouTube friends and a heating mat and head on inside we're gonna start with our tomatoes so I have 16 types of tomatoes these are ones I've grown over the years and I like. The first one is going to be, I just got this, when you order from Baker's Creek, they always send you a free seed packet with your order. So this one's new to me. It's called the Spoon Tomato. Fill out my tag.
They're super small, look how small they are. I usually do two seeds per cell. And I'm just gonna do three of these. Whatever one's the strongest survives. Sometimes I just can't let them go, so I put them in another container. This one's a Chadwick cherry tomato. Really like these. Beet cherry tomato. It's disease resistant. And I want you to start six to 10 weeks before last frost. I'm well aware it's way too soon, but I start early because I have a greenhouse and then I can use that until it's time to put them in the ground. And that allows me to get tomatoes early. So I'm just gonna put a small hole and then cover the seeds up. Always remember to label as you go along. My favorite cherry tomatoes, it's the yellow pear. These are super sweet. They don't usually make it indoors. I'm usually eating them for snacks outside as I'm playing in the garden, but once in a while they do come in. This is the Sunrise Bubbly Tomato. I like it because it also has like a peachy stripes going through with the yellows. Great flavor, it's sweet. It's good in dishes as well as salads and just to eat as a snack. Have you started any of your plant starts for the garden season? Do you do your own plants from seeds or do you buy them from farmer's market or nurseries? This is Dr. Whitey's yellow tomato. This is my absolute favorite tomato. I like about the Baker Seeds packets is you can push them down and they reseal. Not affiliated with them. Would love to be someday. Intense if anybody ever watches it from the company. And this one gets a whole just to itself. See how it seals right up. This is a fun, fun one to say. It's even more fun when people that have never seen it before try to pronounce it. This one I didn't have great luck with last year, but I want to give it one more try. The Princip Borges. Borges? Don't know if I'm saying that right. But it was a drought last year, so we're going to give them one more season.
We'll give him a try. One more time. That's all you got. What is your favorite thing to grow in your garden? I would definitely say mine's tomatoes. Second favorite is the pink jazz tomato. Look at how it has like neat little ridges and the colors. It's a pretty tomato. Plus anything called pink jazz should be, oh no. I only have two seeds left, that's sad. Well, let's see if it does its job. Another favorite is the pineapple. This is kind of a cross between the Dr. Waichi and the, I would say, pink jazz. I forgot to do a tag down there. Why didn't you tell me? That was the pink jazz. I bet you're all on the TV going, you forgot to tag it. Bumblebee cherry. The other one is more yellow. This has more red with yellow stripes, so it's kind of the opposite. Like a golden orange striping. Another sweet cherry tomato. Paul Robeson. It's a red purpley color. It's kind of sweet and smoky and it gives off like a 7 to 10 ounce fruit. We have one that is empty. I'm going to use him because I like this tomato but it's not my favorite. We'll just give them one cell with two seeds. The mortgage lifter. The reason why it was called the mortgage lifter because it so makes so much fruit that if you're selling your tomatoes, you could pay your mortgage, I guess. It produces like mad. It has a sweet taste and it has pink fruits that have delicious, rich, sweet taste. That's kind of a 
neat thing. If you're someone that likes to can, the more fruit you get, the better. So this would be a good one. And that's called the mortgage lifter. Mortgage lifter. Martina's Roma. This one is a determinant and it's very fleshy and kind of like a pear shape. Next one's called the Hungarian Heart. You can see why it gets its name. It's kind of heart-shaped. I like that it's kind of more fleshy. It doesn't have like a ton of seeds. I think we're gonna have to do our lettuce and herbs on another video another day. I have a lot of tomatoes here. But I definitely want to get my tomatoes and my peppers going because they take the longest to produce and grow. Cherokee purple. It's a pretty popular tomato. It's purple, more purple than red. They have huge, huge tomatoes it makes. That's a sweet flavor. One more. There you go. There is nothing like the taste of fresh tomatoes from your garden. Boy, do I miss it off season. Even though I get it in my spaghetti sauces and such. It's still not the same as just biting into a tomato. Next is an egg Lincoln, also another big tomato. And this is good for slicing or canning. If you don't want to dig your seat it's too far, just a little bit. Good idea is to plant these and then like two weeks plant another batch just in case something happens to your tomatoes you'll have some to fall back on if they die or whatever this was new last year i liked it it was the beta lux Grows kind of earlier than the other ones, no staking. And they tend to be three to six ounces each.
This is a determinant. Determinant means it's gonna grow to a determined height and produce only a determinate amount of tomatoes and then it's done. So definitely succession so that succession should succession so in is like I said before plant some today and then in a couple weeks plant some more probably in four weeks for tomatoes this is the classic beef steak This is also a determinant. You can see they're quite fleshy too. These are big ones that tend to be like one to two pound tomatoes. All right, so I'm gonna do my peppers next just to make sure I get them in. These are the tiniest little peppers, but whoo, do they pack a punch. My first time I uh, grew these, I couldn't remember if they were spicy or not. And I am a spice wimp, so I was out in my garden and I bit into it and I was like, oh my goodness. And I'm like running around trying to find water. My mouth was on fire. I was across the garden, not near the water faucet. So I'm like yelling out there, Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. If anybody saw me, they would have thought I was like, wow, she really likes her garden. Or what's wrong with her? That's pretty funny. I also got a couple people that are like, oh, peppers can never be too hot. And they tried this. And they were like, whoo. But I'm only gonna grow two of these. Maybe even one. grow two, one for a friend. It's the hot pepper salsa blend. I do four of these. I do like to make my salsa. This is a sweet pepper, it's called Eliza. red and black, a purpley colored. They grow a lot of peppers. I enjoyed those last year. So we'll do th three of those. When you plant seeds, you want to make sure they do not dry out. They need to be wet. Not like soaking wet, but they need to be damp. For at least a couple weeks. Once they dry out, forget it. They're done. And last but not least, we have the... banana peppers. I am going to do six of these. I 
guess I'm gonna do five of those. Here I thought I was so prepared for my pepper, my uh, seeds. Banana peppers are a sweet pepper. I like to pickle them for sandwiches. So I do have some room left for some greens. That's a bonus. So I'm gonna start with my herbs, basil. I'm gonna do three. This is a Genovese basil, big green leaves. for cooking, for pesto. And I'm gonna do a few lettuces. First I have the Rouge d'Iver. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So I'm just going to do one each. Lettuces can grow when it's cold. Not right now, but by the time these get up nice and big, spring will almost be here. And I have raised beds, so those get warmer than growing in the ground. I'm going to do two of these. The butter crunch lettuce, one of my favorites. Another thing that is so good fresh and during the winter months, you buy it at the grocery store and it's like tasteless. Then I have a Chef Musclin mix. Do two of these. And then I want to get a kale started. I'm gonna do this. One of my favorite kales. The Nero di Toscana. Not as bitter as some tender meat. Butter crunch times two, that means two cells. Toscana times two. And that, we are all out of room and time for today. So it's a good start. I'm just gonna press these down so I can get my cover on it. Do it so I can make sure the writing still shows. Well, that was fun. That's a good start of our garden. Let's go bring it over to the windowsill. There we are by the windowsill. It's winter outside. But we're gonna grow tomatoes and peppers and such inside. I have it on a heat mat. And once I start seeing 
little plants, then I will start the grow light. This is Sandy from Country Cooking with Sandy Marie. Thank you for joining me today in the greenhouse and inside to start the spring garden. What an exciting time. Join me next time when I'm cooking in the kitchen or growing in the garden.